Holy shit. So this week started off really, really good. We hit a final table on our first stream of the week, Monday night, the 1655K, basically the same tournament that we had shipped the week before. And the final table got off to a really hot start. Very early at the FT, we got into an identical spot to a situation we were in a week ago. And this time we were able to take what we had learned and applied from Ryan and use it in this spot to our advantage. All right. We had this exact spot the last time we were in this tournament. We're going to make the correct play here. And the best part about this spot was that aggression on that hand allowed a guy to take our aggression the very next hand the wrong way and overplay his ace 10 suited, which led to us being chip leader early at the FT. Come on, chat. Big spot. Big spot, chat. Here we go. Get your hold emotes out. This is for a heapy chip lead. Good luck, us. Pair that board. Pair that board. Oh, let's go, baby! But as the final table went on, our inexperience over the last several months at FT started to show, and we really got a little passive. And we got ourselves into some awkward spots, and in particular, we really struggled when we got down three-handed. Just could not find enough plays. We were folding too much. We weren't putting on enough aggression. We weren't trapping our opponents who were being overly aggressive and exploiting us. And eventually, we wound down to the point where we had to shove a hand with 10 big blinds left, and we ended up going out third place. I remember going to bed that night a little frustrated, not with getting third place. Obviously, anytime we can get top three, that's a win. That's something that uh, Crazy Sixes had taught me a long time ago that I've always held on to. But it was just a feeling of like feeling like we didn't play our best and feeling like we got outplayed and we didn't play confidently when we got three handed, which is a little bizarre considering we just shipped this tournament a week prior. But I think that this tournament and the way that it played out and some of the opponents we faced just allowed us to see some of our weaknesses. And as I was lying in bed that night, I had a couple decisions to make as to how I was going to respond to this. And I just really felt this overwhelming feeling of like, I need to take this weakness, I need to take these mistakes, and I need to get it out there. And I made the decision that night that I was just going to take these hand histories and tag all of the key hands, and I was going to get them in front of as many eyes as possible. I posted them in Discord groups that I was a part of. I brought them to my weekly study session with Bet on Drew so that we could discuss and go over some of the hands there. I sent them to Ryan LaPlante as a part of the group study on Wednesday. I shared them with several of my close friends and got some of their feedback. I brought them to the hand history review I did with Frank on Tuesday and I got his takes as a live player and as exploitative player. And I really just enveloped myself with answers because I want to get better. And I feel like a big part of getting better is going to be not running from, not making excuses from, but embracing that weakness and trying to improve and learn from those mistakes. And it was a really great thing to see and to be a part of just getting those things out there day after day after day for about 72 hours straight and getting as many perspectives and as many insights as possible so that I had a really well-rounded view and approach to what had happened, what might have gone wrong and what I could have done differently. I think coming out of that, I definitely found some creative lines uh, that I could have taken in key situations. I also found some exploitative strategies that I could have applied to people who were over betting against me, who were over probing against me, who were being overly aggressive. Uh, and it, so I both got a micro view in terms of like what to do in specific situations, but I also got a macro view about how I could have approached this final table as we got four and three handed differently that really has boosted my confidence moving forward. 
The rest of the week was kind of interesting. This is the first week where I've tried to put together an hour by hour schedule that kind of outlined my days, my goals, what I wanted to do, trying to be really, really efficient with my time and really make sure that I'm putting time in where it needs to be put in in order for me to be successful. And it was a good learning process. I think that doing a schedule is a good task and it's a good plan but where I might have gone a little bit wrong and I didn't realize this in the moment was I was trying to do every single thing every day it was like all right every day I'm going to exercise and study poker and meditate and do mindset training and put a session in and check up on my family and 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 in my head when I built the schedule originally that kind of made a lot of sense like hey these are all things that are important you want to make time for but in reality Every time you do so, a new thing, you have to kind of shift your mindset. You have to shift your focus. And you have to recalibrate your brain. And so I just ended up going from thing to thing to thing to thing. And, and my head was bouncing around about halfway through the day. My head was just spinning. It was just too much. And so I feel like over this next few weeks, I'm going to have to do a lot of this, just learning and adjusting outside of the poker game and trying to figure out what I need to do to set myself up to have the most optimal sessions possible you know is it better for me to play 10 hour sessions eight hour sessions six hour sessions do i need to vary it depending on how i'm feeling that day is it better to play five days a week and take two days off is it better to play four days a week and take three days off should i eat breakfast before i play should i wait to eat till after i play how much time should there be between when i wake up and when i start a session i know this can sound a little granular and a little like over analyzing things, but I really do think that there is an optimal way. And as we learn more about ourselves and learn more about how our minds work, how our bodies work, we can get more in tune with that and put ourselves in better places for success. And I think in the past, I've underappreciated those things and I've been too eager to just get to the grind and not think about what do I need to have set up for success. So I have a feeling it's going to be a while before I get the schedule thing down and I really get a good feel for what my vibe is, but I'm going to keep working towards it. I'm going to keep making adjustments each week and going from one thing to the other until I kind of finally get to that place where I'm like, this is the sweet spot. And I really feel like I'm in a good spot where I'm dialed in and playing the best poker I can play. My week didn't end the best. Uh, we had a, about a $300 losing session on Sunday. Didn't feel like we played too bad. We had some gross spots. We got aces all in against aces and kings at one point and uh, lost that hand. We ran our ace king and aces. These things are going to happen. Uh, and as I'm moving up in stakes, I'm going to have to get used to bigger and bigger downswings and upswings. Like it's all going to be a part of the process. So I kind of feel like I'm in a place right now where progress is going to be a little bit slower because there's there's a longer process in place here in terms of getting my lifestyle in order, in terms of getting used to the mid stakes, adjusting to some of the different player types we see in the mid stakes that we don't see in small stakes. And I just don't feel like these are processes that are just going to like organically fix themselves out over the next couple of days. So I feel like over the next, you know, six to 12 weeks, there's going to be a kind of a mini journey as a part of the journey as we really develop and grow in these spots and see uh, where that all takes us. So I'm looking forward to bringing you guys through that. Of course, you guys can watch that over at my Twitch stream live three to four days a week, twitch.tv slash poker pastor. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be back next week, hopefully with some progress and maybe some developments. We'll talk soon.